Love smarter, not harder, today's question. Hello, what are great ways of obtaining everlasting self-love? That's really the key to what you will and will not tolerate in relationships, correct? Sometimes I feel like I'm in the right direction and then bam, LOL. So really you are asking two questions and they're both super important. So I'm so glad you asked. And let's start with self-love. You talk about everlasting self-love. And I want to give you three points about self-love that I think are really important. One, it's a practice, meaning we're always working on it. Our relationship with ourself is a relationship. And just like friendships and romantic partners and family members, we're always working on the relationship. And I don't mean work in like the hard stuff, but meaning we're always exploring our connection to ourselves. Some days we're not gonna feel so great about ourselves. It doesn't mean we don't love ourselves. It just means that we're feeling off, right? It could be hormones. It could be we just got broken up with. It could be that we're in the midst of a global pandemic and we're just feeling not ourselves. But if there's a foundation of self-love, you have to start there. And if there's not a foundation of self-love, you have to figure out how to get it. And it takes, like I said, it's a practice. It takes intentional effort. You can't just go, wow, look at all those people who seem to love themselves so much. I guess they were just born that way. They're so lucky. No, no one was just born that way. Now, some people, of course, came from very strong, emotionally healthy families. Others didn't. They came from toxic, dysfunctional families. But let's be honest, all families have their issues. So no one leaves childhood unscathed, right? Even if your parents loved you, maybe you got bullied at school. We all have these experiences in childhood that we in adulthood have to address. And it is our job, no matter what happened to us in our childhood, which wasn't our fault because we were kids and we were vulnerable. In adulthood, it is our job to take care of those issues through therapy, through self-help books, through podcasts. We need to do the intentional work making the effort. And that's how we concretize the self-love notion, realizing it's like any muscle. It takes intentional effort to keep it strong. To have a healthy sense of self, we need to make intentional efforts to have that. How do you do that? Well, listen to my podcast. That's one way. Put yourself in front of Instagram accounts that are building you up, edifying you, reminding you that you are worth something and that you're valuable. Look to the psych research. In episode nine, I have a podcast called Think Better to Feel Better, Three Hacks to Boost Your Self-Esteem. And that's from the psych research. So we look to what science shows us. We can absolutely make ourselves feel better about ourselves we can do the work, we absolutely can. Episode 44, how to fall in love with yourself, which is a conversation with Catherine Baldwin. And she shares how years of self-sabotage and being really brutal with herself and how she overcame that. Episode 47 and episode 50 are my conversation with Lise Wilcox. It's a two-part series and she's another one who shares, she's a mindset coach. She shares how she didn't love herself. She was living a lie. She was asleep in her own life as she calls it. So check that out. In episode 52, I talk about neuroplasticity being your superpower. This is what I mentioned earlier. Our brain can be wired in a direction that makes it easy for us to feel bad about ourselves, easy for us to feel down, easy for us to feel depressed and anxious. We can rewire our brains, literally change the neural pathways. So check out that episode for some help there. Episode 58 is called Own It with dating coach Renee Slansky, how she ditched dating narcs and then found her person because she took responsibility and did the work of learning to love herself. Also, one of my favorite episodes, episode 63, Deeper Love Through Deeper Dating, talks about how we can learn, my interview with Ken Page, LCSW, how we can learn to cherish our own core gifts. And that's another part of the process of self-love is to really cherish who we are, the unique person that we are. Episode 77, take charge of negative thoughts because oftentimes we are telling ourselves a story and that's my second part of self-love. We are telling ourselves a story that we're not worthy, that we always get rejected, that we must be doing something wrong, that we must be inherently flawed as a person because life hasn't played out the way we want it to or because we don't feel that confidence when we walk into a room. 
And so that story that we tell ourselves, it's a narrative. It's these thoughts that we keep saying over and over again. So taking charge of those, those thoughts, and I have an interview with psychotherapist Kate Lambie, and we explore techniques from ACT, acceptance and commitment therapy. And then episode 79, what the hell, <laughs> can't talk, what the heck is self-love anyway? And that's my interview with Jonathan Asley, who's a dating coach and a self-love expert. He tries to concretize what we're talking about when we talk about self-love. So number one, it's a practice. Number two, what is the story you're telling yourself? because the story you tell yourself can be changed. You can tell yourself another story, a truer story, a story that is legitimate and recognizes the extraordinary person that you are. And sometimes you have to tell yourself that before you even believe it inside. Kind of fake it till, till, you're make, till, till you make it. I haven't had enough coffee today. So tell your, instead of waiting until you feel good about yourself to tell yourself how good you feel about yourself, Tell yourself how good you feel about yourself and let the thought trickle down into becoming a feeling. And my third point that I want to mention is to put your mind in front of empowering, uplifting messages. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, in front of positive Instagram accounts, in front of empowering messaging, whether it's motivational speakers, whether it's pastors like Joel Osteen is one of my favorites, whether it's podcasts with uplifting information. And that gets back to the podcast episode I talked about, episode 52. Neuroplasticity is your superpower. When you put yourself in front of positive messages, you will begin the process of rewiring your brain so that it will be easier to think positively. So it will be easier to think in an empowered manner. And when we think positively and think in an empowered manner, it trickles down and makes us feel empowered and feel positive and learn to love ourselves more. Okay, I had a part two to this, which I will address in another IGTV because we're already to seven minutes, but I do hope that that was helpful.